very much. Uh, I'm um, going to talk about the experience of ISDS in Australia and why there's so much community opposition to it, and also about the position of the current government, which has, uh, we had an election in September and the government has changed and their position has changed somewhat. So, um, I'll just briefly talk about some of the critical issues that have been debated about it, because that's been covered by the previous speakers, but then talk about why the previous Labor government in Australia um, developed a, um, a policy against ISDS, then the current government policy, um, then a bit about the history of community opposition and the fact that a previous Conservative government didn't include ISDS in uh, the US-Australia Free Trade Agreement. And then a um, recent case which has had a big influence in Australia, the a Canadian gas mining regulation case uh, and its influence on one of the parties in the Conservative Coalition. And um, finish up with talking about um, how the debate might go from here. So um, I won't go through this slide in detail, but just to say that um, ISDS is a flawed system. It allows a single foreign investor to sue a government over um, regulation which can be in the public interest. And even if it's unsuccessful, governments pay a very high price and it's not really a, a legal system that has the safeguards that national legal systems have because there's no independent judiciary, there's a lack of transparency, and it doesn't properly consider public interest issues. And as um, Melinda mentioned, the Australian government is not alone, uh, the Labor government was not alone in rejecting this system. In fact, in October, 10 Latin American countries rejected it, and South Africa and India have also um, done so. So, um, to move on to talk about um, the situation in Australia, um, under the previous Labor Party government, um, that party opposed ISDS because of community opposition. Um, the new Liberal National Coalition government, which is now in office, has said it's prepared to negotiate ISDS on a case-by-case -case basis. Now this is very worrying for us, uh, particularly in relation to the TPP. And in fact, in a statement just a few days ago, the Trade Minister said that um, they were uh, prepared to agree to ISDS um, in return for substantial concessions from the US on market access. Um, so the current, in the, in the negotiations up until now, they'd be still saying no to it, but they're prepared to negotiate it away. Uh, we don't think this is something that should be <coughs> negotiable. Um, the other thing that the Minister said was that they would be seeking exceptions for health and environment um, regulation. Um, but we know um, from Melinda's presentation uh, and um, from the experience of previous US free trade agreements that those exceptions have not been effective in uh, previous trade agreements. And in fact, the US is not even agreeing to have them in the TPP. Um, now, the history of public opposition in, to ISDS in Australia goes back to the Australia-US Free Trade Agreement, the OSFETA, a weird name, in 2004, um, where the critical debate was actually based on the experience of the North American Free Trade Agreement cases. Um, there was a lot of public debate and concern, especially from environment and health groups, because of the kind of examples that um, <coughs> Melinda outlined, and there was a lot of lobbying of government and opposition parties. And in the end, that Conservative government, the Liberal National Coalition government led by John Howard, did not include um, ISDS in the um, US-Australia Free Trade Agreement. Now, after that, in 2010, the Australian Productivity Commission actually did a uh, review which included, of Australia's trade agreements, which included looking at ISDS. Now, just to explain, this commission is actually quite a conservative body. It's a statutory body which provides economic advice to government. It's consistently supported free trade, um, and it's been supportive of multilateral, um, non-discriminatory trade agreements. 
Um, but it did a report in 2010 which reviewed the evidence on ISDS and um, found that ISDS gives additional rights to foreign investors over local investors. It found that there was no recent evidence of market failure or economic problems that would justify ISDS, no systematic uh, bias against foreign investors, and also that there was no evidence of increased foreign investment if countries have ISDS. This is often one of the arguments that's used, that investors will have more confidence and there will be more investment if you have ISDS provisions in trade agreements, but if you actually look at the evidence, this is not supported. And they found that the experience of ISDS demonstrates considerable policy and financial risk to governments from ISDS. Um, so that influenced the um, previous Australian Labor Party government trade policy, um, both the Public Opposition and the Productivity Commission report, and it came out with a policy which said it wouldn't support ISDS because it gave greater legal rights to foreign businesses than those available to domestic businesses and it wouldn't support measures which constrained its ability to regulate in health and environmental areas and in particular it mentioned tobacco advertising because by that stage um, Philip Morris Tobacco Company had already launched a case against the Uruguayan government for regulation of tobacco advertising. Um, and the government not only didn't support it for, for Australia, but also said it wouldn't demand it of other countries. And of course, this was then reinforced by the experience of the Philip Morris Tobacco Company actually launching an ISDS case against the government's own plain packaging legislation. So I'll just say a bit about that. Um, this was uh, the policy of the previous Labor government um, it implements the Framework Convention on Tobacco from the World Health Organization um, uh, Convention. It aims to reduce the number of younger smokers based on research showing that when kids start smoking, they don't just sm start smoking cigarettes, they start smoking particular brand names because a brand is associated with certain glamorous or other attractive ideas, you know, the Marlboro Man or the whatever. Um, and um, it was passed in 2011 and implemented in 2012. So um, Philip Morris took a range of actions and other tobacco companies took a range of actions against the legislation. Um, it's actually a US company. Um, it lobbied actively for ISDS in the TPPA. They made a submission saying we want to have ISDS in the TPPA because it will enable us to take action against tobacco regulation. Um, it, in the case of Australia, it couldn't use the US-Australia Free Trade Agreement to take action because there was no provision for ISDS. And so they acquired, they, they used an Asian arm of their company to acquire Philip Morris Australia, and that meant that they became a Hong Kong investor in Australia. They shopped around until they found a forum where they could launch such a case. And so um, they lo actually launched the case before the legislation was passed, hoping to frighten the government into withdrawing the legislation. And that the legislation was passed in any case. And it was actually passed with bipartisan <coughs> support. The opposition parties supported it. And there were polls done which showed that the majority of people, um, over 60% of people supported the legislation. And that's because a lot of people have relatives who've died from tobacco-related uh, related diseases. Um, now, there was a series of other legal actions. Uh, there was a concerted strategy by the tobacco companies. They launched a constitutional challenge in the Australian High Court, a group of tobacco companies led by British American Tobacco and Japan Tobacco. And what they were alleging here was that because they could no longer uh, show their trademarks, that this was a, 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 an acquisition of their property which was not on just terms, and that relates to a section of the Australian Constitution. Um, at the same time, Ukraine, Honduras, the Dominican Republic, and now they've been joined by some other countries, um, lodged a WTO dispute. Now, in the WTO, there are only government-to-government -government disputes. 
Um, now, um, the, we know the tobacco companies are supporting uh, those governments in lodging that dispute. Philip Morris has actually referred to it as part of its strategy. Um, I won't talk further about the um, WTO case that's ongoing, but um, I'm going to concentrate now on the High Court case and Philip Morris's use of ISDS. So, the Australian High Court made a decision in 2012. It found that the legislation didn't violate our constitution, um, and the reasons um, found that it was justified public health legislation, regulation, and that there was no acquisition of property that had occurred, and it awarded costs against the tobacco companies, and that was a six to one majority decision. So it was a decision of the highest court in Australia that found that tobacco companies had no case to be compensated for this um, legislation. Um, but Philip Morris on the same day made an announcement saying, we don't think the High Court case has any relevance to our ISDS case. Uh, we are going to continue to sue the Australian government through the Hong Kong Australia um, investment agreement. And that case is still ongoing. And that provoked even stronger community opposition in Australia. There was outraged editorials and um, a lot of letters to the press and so on. And in fact, even an arbitration lawyer who was very much in favour of ISDS said he thought that this case could give ISDS a bad name. <coughs> Um, there's been another case which has fueled further um, community opposition in Australia and that's a case in Canada which is about um, the regulation of shale gas mining. Now in Australia we've had um, coal seam gas mining and there's been a number of rural communities who wanted to have regulation of this type of mining on, in terms of how it relates to its distance from where people live its effect on water tables, its effect on um, uh, agricultural land. And they have succeeded in getting at least two state governments to conduct environmental reviews and in one case to actually introduce new regulation of this kind of mining. Now, those communities who are mostly conservative um, coalition government supporters were very alarmed to find that the US Lone Pine, Lone Pine Company is using the ISDS provisions in the North American Free Trade Agreement to sue the Quebec state or provincial government in Canada for exactly the same, same kind of environmental review of um, gas mining. And um, they are very fearful that if Australia signs up to ISDS, uh, particularly in the TPP that US companies and companies from some of the other um, uh, TPP nations could, um, who are investing in a coal seam gas in Australia could sue if there were further regulation in Australia. So there's actually developed quite strong opposition um, in those communities to ISDS and many of them as I said are supporters of the National Party which is one of the part, um, partners in the current coalition government. It's the smaller partner, but it is significant. So the implications for the TPPA are that there are strong, uh, there's strong continuing community opposition to ISDS uh, across the political spectrum, from the government's, a section of the government's own supporters and also from a range of other community groups because of the kind of cases we've talked about. Um, public health organisations, uh, anti-tobacco um, organisations, unions, churches, all kinds of community organisations are concerned about this. And um, the um, community opposition, we think, will continue to influence um, what the Australian government does. And if it agrees to um, have or to trade off ISDS in the TPP, it will pay a very high political price. So we still think that they're, um, uh, we're trying to influence our government not to do so, but if it does so, there will be continuing um, opposition and, and stronger opposition to the TPP itself. Thank you. Oh. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Patricia.
Um, we are now open to uh, questions and answers from the press. If you have any questions re uh, regarding the investment uh, issues, uh, one of the chapters in the TPP, please uh, state your name and organization. 